Hi, Roy here of Roy Reads Anything. This is a channel about eclectic reading, which this week includes uncanny children, uncanny aliens and uncanny places. Because I've been on a trip and that's why there's been more of a gap between videos than usual. So, did manage to keep up with watching some booktube stuff while I was away and really enjoyed a video by Michael K. Vaughan which I think was called Why I Read What I Read and in his usual fantastic style sets out how his core core reading that Michael K. Vaughan does is the fantastic in many many senses and he actually contrasts that with me with my read anything approach which is fair enough that's what the channel's called and obviously i do set out to read a wide range of things but i kind of thought ultimately i think i'm still a, a reader of fantastic things at heart and that i will be seeking out the fantastic elements in what look like they're going to be more mundane books. Now that's probably an idea I'll have to elaborate on and maybe make a sort of response video about, but just an example of what I mean. Um, something I read just now is a guidebook. So it's a guidebook to a physical place, Yorkshire South Riding. Uh, by a guy called Oswald Harland. It was published in 1951 and it's part of a series called The County Books. And they basically, they produced a whole bunch of these for all of the British counties. So every area has, has its book, each with an author. So the, the idea of the publishers was to find a, an interesting writer who knew a place and could do an in-depth, quite personal piece about it. But it's not fiction and it's about physical, you know, physical territory you can go and visit. So it's about as far from fantasy as you could possibly imagine. I mean, fair enough, it's it's slightly over 70 years old. So uh, that's more than a lifetime ago. So I suppose there's a there's an element of necromancy to to reading this rather than say today's guidebook but where's where's the fun in that just let me read you the blurb okay so this book once owned by a DJ Wickens who lived in Burford here's the blurb the North Riding of Yorkshire has its familiar landscapes and known horizons yet it has always been a land of mystery a Leoness of the North, a region where nobody comes and nobody goes, a land of vast distances and blurred memories. Its ways of thought are strange, its patterns of life unfamiliar, its dialect well nigh incomprehensible to strangers. It poses questions nobody can answer. It demands the poet and visionary to interpret its mysteries. So it's setting up this description of towns, hills, roads and coastline as being a kind of magic and it's enchantingly every day. And I love stuff like this. I'm not going to go on much about it now, but I'm just going to sort of park that idea that, you know, may maybe all books are fantastic literature. Anyway, what have I been reading? Well, I'm doing a couple of challenges at the moment, so one of those is the read what you own challenge. So the idea is to read books I already possess before I'm allowed to buy any new ones. And I've made a little bit of headway in that. I read a western called Claw One Day of Fury, and that's going to get its own video when I've read another book to go with it so I won't say anything about that now then I looked in my Kindle and in the depths of my Kindle found The Children's Home by Charles Lambert I bought loads of time ago um, and 
for some reason had never started it. So I've also read The Children's Home and that means my tally, I'm aiming for 25, okay, so 25 books to read before I buy new ones. And now I've done two. The Children's Home by Charles Lambert. It's unsettling. It's deeply strange. It's got unexpected things happening throughout it. The the blurb there says kind of for fans of Sh of Shirley Jackson, Neil Gaiman, Edward Gorey. Wouldn't disagree with any of that, although you know, it's one of those genre defying. I guess it's kind of literary fiction, but it's got elements, certainly got elements of horror. So there's this guy called Morgan, lives in a lives in a big house, walled enclosed house, and you kind of sense that some sort of unrest or war or apocalypse has happened outside the the, the grounds. And you also find out that he, he is hideously disfigured. And then children start appearing in the house. They just sort of show up. They seem able to appear and disappear in strange ways. And more and more strange things keep happening. Good. I enjoyed it. It took a bit of an allegorical turn, which probably isn't my favourite way for books to end up. It's therefore probably not my favourite Charles Lambert book of the three or four I've read, but um, yep, but certainly a good one. So that's my slight inroad so far into Read What You Own. I'm also doing Howl for the Holidays, which is a science fiction reading challenge. Works of Hal Clement. Uh, did a video about that a while ago. And I have made a start, not on any of the physical books yet, but on the Kindle Best Of collection I've got. So I've read two short stories, which I really enjoyed. Initial impressions, I mean, they're definitely hard SF, science, technology. But the thing, both of these are about communicating across species. So I had really interesting stuff about how how you could how human beings could possibly relate to the other which is you know there's no there's no um universal translator or whatever it is they have in hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy that fish that does it all it's like language is this you, you get to appreciate just how language is related to the, the people's bodies, to their the whole structure of their thought and just how profoundly alien that can be. So interesting stuff there. Looking forward to getting to the novels. Uh, what else did I do? Ah, right. So still working through my yard of shabby books. The decorative books I've bought to uh, to actually read and and the one I took um, away with me basically because it was small is the home university library tiny slim book and this one is a history of the Church of England originally written in 1914 this was republished in 1944 so uh, Number 90 in the Home University Library of Modern Knowledge, published by the Oxford University Press. Uh, Look to some of the other titles and they're quite a sort of, um, it's interesting how many of these junk books I've got are some sort of self-help, you know, learn stuff at home kind of thing. So apparently there are about 200 of these Home University Library books. On lots of topics and they're they're pretty intellectual they're not like you know how to raise chickens and stuff like that they're more um, well, things things like this history um, ideas some ideas like eugenics that we're not so keen on anymore um, I think the equivalent today would be something like these very short introductions which I really like I've got loads of these you see they're about the same size Similar idea, get an expert 
give you an overview of something in a relatively short short space. I tried with the history of the Church of England. At first I was like, whoa, this is great, really interesting stuff. It got really bogged down in sort of legalities of property and power and sort of doctrine stuff that I, I just lost it. So I'm actually DNFing this one. Um, although I do feel I should honour the books in some way. So I've made a note when I'm buying books again. Um, a more modern church history is something that I would be would be open to reading. But um, yep, yeah, we've, we've given it a run, for, a run for its money. So Home University Library, hooray! Joining the already read now about halfway through yard of random books that's about it i read other stuff but time isn't infinite i will hopefully be back with whatever i've read this week so thanks for watching and i'll see you soon goodbye